Hey everyone, it's Dr. Sam, and today I want to take a question on posterior vitreous detachment. So this is a pretty common condition. Some stats show that at the age of 65, 75% of people suffer a PVD. Now usually it's not a site-threatening condition, but it is quite frustrating because when the vitreous pulls away from the retina, it creates an influx of floaters that become very distracting. You can also experience things like flashing lights, electrical lightning, and it's important that you go to your eye doctor immediately and make sure there is no retinal detachment. There are many reasons why our vitreous begins to thin out, and I'm gonna go through the list. Moderate to high amounts of nearsightedness, that's over minus five, minus six diopters. Aging, which creates the change in the vitreous gel sac itself. Another cause is cataract surgery. So if you have had cataract surgery and intraocular lenses put in your eye, you do have a higher risk of either getting floaters or posterior vitreal detachment. In my clinic, I'm seeing a lot of computer use that triggers posterior vitreal detachments. So when we stare at a screen all day, we're getting the absorption of the damaging blue light, which is gonna dry out all of our tissues, including the vitreous gel sac. In addition, when we're focused at one distance for long periods of time, this is gonna stress the eye muscles, it's gonna affect the, the circulation in the eyes, and we're not gonna get the nutrient absorption because of the visual stress. Trauma is another reason why we can develop posterior vitreal detachment. So if you have had a head injury, car accident, sports injury, you're more susceptible for the vitreous coming apart from the retina. If you're in menopause, you have low levels of estrogen and hyaluronic acid, and this can affect vitreous health. And finally, if you're getting intravitreal drugs, this would be for conditions like wet macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, hypertensive retinopathy, you do have a higher risk of developing posterior vitreous detachment. So I'd like to go over a list of complementary ingredients, nutritional supplementation that you can do to be proactive in keeping your vitreous healthy. The first two phytochemicals would be lutein and zeaxanthin. I've talked about those a lot. These are in the macula and they protect the retina. They improve the circulation. They're also very important for the vitreous. So I'm recommending about 16 milligrams a day of lutein and about six milligrams a day of zeaxanthin. Next, I'd recommend about two to 3,000 milligrams a day of omega-3 fatty acids. You know, about 50% of the retina is made up of fatty acids. It's an anti-inflammatory agent, and it also really supports vitreous health. I also recommend hyaluronic acid. This has been shown to be supportive for all connective tissue. You can actually find this in many skin products. I recommend about 100 to 200 milligrams per day and vitamin C. I recommend between 2,000 and 3,000 milligrams a day. Get the buffered kind. Vitamin C is very supportive for connective tissue, especially in the eyes. Remember, high levels of vitamin C, lower risk of developing cataracts. Vitamin C is also essential for vitreous health. I recommend bilberry. This is a neuroprotective agent. It also helps improve the microcapillary circulation in the retina. I recommend about 180 milligrams a day. Ginkgo is another one that's really supportive for vascular health. I recommend about 120 milligrams a day. And vitamin D3, which has been shown to help improve the circulation in the retina. And I recommend between 2,000 and 5,000 IUs a day. Now, topically, I would suggest my 5% MSM to start with. Use that about two to three times a day, followed by the homeopathic eye drops Optique. 
So you're keeping your eyes hydrated during the day. After about two months, you can switch to the 15% MSM. It's gonna sting a little bit, but by that time you're used to the MSM drops. MSM has so many benefits. It's moisturizing, it's hydrating, and the Optic eye drops are also very beneficial for hydrating the eye. And then in the evening, I would get some castor oil, organic castor oil, and make sure it's hexane free. You can do a castor oil massage on the eyelids. We know that castor oil helps as a wound healer. It supports the skin, it's moisturizing, and even just massaging it lightly on the eyelids, it'll penetrate into the vitreous and support better vitreous health. Eat an anti-inflammatory diet, you may consider an intermittent fasting program, a liver cleanse, talk to your functional medicine doctor about that. And finally, make sure you're protecting your eyes from the blue light, either from a blue blocking pair of glasses and maybe a blue blocking screen that you put on your digital device. So there are many proactive things you can do to keep your vitreous healthy. If you do suffer a PVD, I would jump into this protocol. It will definitely help you. And I wanna thank you so much for the question. Take care, everybody.